Welcome to Binary Jazz. It's another Friday. It's another wonderful 2023 uh, morning, perhaps, as as this is being released to the internet. Uh, how how are you, my friends and listeners? Do you remember these calls, though, in 2020 and how intense these were sometimes when it was like, wow. So, yes, it is 2023. But that size a little less heavy than it was two <laughs> years ago. Uh, the bird is not so. so much. It, it's true. It's true. Uh, yeah, I was just reminded of that because I, 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 as you were saying it, like I had like flashbacks, vividly recalling like some of these starting in like, uh, <laughs> the, like there was like a like a visceral pain, you know, just that we all shared. Like, what the fuck is going on? You know, I mean, I that think... still exists, but it's not all capitalized. It's like a capital F, lowercase U C K. I mean, it's... I I think that I think that I and most uh s- people of sound minds perhaps took a collective sigh of relief on the day that Donald Trump left the office, uh, and since then, however bad things are. They can't possibly be that bad. Um. Yeah. Um. I have watched with just astonishment, like it not in a good way. What's a negative word for astonishment? I don't know. Astonishment's pretty pretty generic. <laughs> yeah. Well, negative astonishment. At Negatively Florida. flabbergasted. <laughs> God, Florida. <laughs> Do people? Yeah. I mean. Was I just immune to that previously? Did people yes. say it that way previously? Yes. Really? They did? Yes. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. like, I'm at this point in my life where I'm like, the hell, people? You're just, yeah, you're just out of it. And you've been out of it I'm far for, enough for a lot, for long enough that you're able to to see things objectively. Yeah. It's always been that I just way. don't think it was that bad when I was there in the no. like, 2010s. It was. It was. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> But okay. like I mean, it I makes sense. It makes sense when you. you're in it. It makes sense that you you you're too close. Hey, can we talk about something happy? Since we already sure. kicked off this episode, yeah, like I'd love to. Are you Ted Lasso viewers? Oh um, God, is that happy? Yeah, I it I think that the, I think <laughs> I know, but I think that there was brilliance in the last episode, and it's taken me three years to under three seasons to understand, and I wanted to talk about the the. The, the, I haven't seen anybody talking about this online, and it, I'm I'm like the whole thing really? about it's this. all my Twitter feed. Is just, <laughs> well, no, this specific my whole this, Twitter feed is reacting to Ted Lasso, and I'm like, I haven't seen it. I also the, don't watch Succession. <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched Succession either. The I, I don't the, want to. I feel like it's gonna be too close to home. Anyway, same. the ending, right? Like Trent writes his book. It's titled The Lasso Way, and Ted, Ted says, you know, it was never changed. The title's about never about me. me, right? Um, well, duh. I mean, of course. But um, the the magic of Ted specifically in in that observation, like so on the nose, like if you've been paying attention, of course, that's not a new realization. Uh, but the magic, I think, of Ted is um, uh, was in the fact that they didn't win the whole thing, which would have been like way over the top. Mm-hmm. Um but, Which, by the way, spoilers to anyone who. Oh, yeah, shit, really. sorry. Did I, I'm sorry. It, <laughs> did I didn't even ask? Did you both watch it already? I, I haven't have, seen yeah. any of Ted Lasso. I have no idea what you're talking okay. about. Great. Um, so it's, it's irrelevant. To, you can spoil it, for Allison. Chris, you said you saw. Oh yeah, spoil for me. I'm just if anyone okay. watching yeah. cares and has not seen it yet. Yes, yeah, so we we finished it. Yeah, great. Right. Then I, I'm not ringing for anybody here and anybody yeah. else that's viewing in the future. In more listening, Ted Lasso is it has nothing to do with cowboys. Um, <laughs> the um, the beautiful part though, and and like reflecting for me was the idea of like you need that person that um is a um uh what's sort of looking for you need that person that like helps a team understand like takes a team and makes them all look at each other, and when that happens and a team like functions together, I use that word team loosely. Like think of like a band of musicians or um whatever that group yep, yep um that team they work together like the the output is so much better than the sum of the parts and that's and, the, and then at some point you don't care whether 
the definition of you've made your own definition of success. Like it doesn't matter if you win the whole thing or not, because you as a team were just like amazing and um, uh, invincible. Like that is a cool feeling. And so I, during that last episode was reflecting on some of those points in my life. And um, it was really cool to relive that and think about those people. Some I haven't talked to in years and just like uh, it inspired me to shoot a message like, Hey, I was thinking of you and uh, really enjoy the time we had together. These people are not, maybe some of them are, are absolutely friends. Some of them are not. Some of them are, are just former colleagues, but that there was that time we had that connection as a team. And that, um, I don't know, that part of, of the, the human experience, I think, um, is, uh, was some of the magic for me in the last episode and made me appreciate what the writers did there. Yeah. That's, um, interesting segue into, uh, the, something that's been on my mind which is you know teams in a workplace environment and workplace environments in general and places that i have worked and things that i have done um and that's that's one of the things uh allison you and i were talking about like the drag of agency work and part of that drag particularly um when teams are formed for the purpose of a particular project and then dissolved and then reassembled in a, with different component parts uh, for a different project based on, you know, the skill sets of, of the people or whatever needed for that project is that you create, you maybe you created that invincible team for that project, um, but then that invincible team dissolves and now you have to reform that bond with a completely new team and that's really hard and and like almost every agency project um for me was like that with uh, up until you know when we were at web dev and they're like well well uh when we start when i started at web dev it was like this team and that team two teams and they worked together and they worked really well together and maybe it wasn't necessarily balanced with like the skills that match all the things, but the team worked really well together. Um, and then that went away because they wanted to like, you know, have these people, these three people over here work on the smaller thing and these three people over here. And then it became more like, well, what do we need for the project? And that's and all the projects that I worked on at human made were like that um, until I was on, until I worked on uh, Altus. Uh, and, and then it was like, well, this is the product team and it's pretty much, we're just building the product and the product's never done. And that was what, one of the things that attracted me to product work was like, you're working with the same people. Um, and that's how it's been sort of where I am now too. But then like, um, yeah, people leave and then like that, that, or, and maybe people join and then you have to sort of like recreate that thing. And it's, 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 I, yeah, it's one of the things that that's, that's difficult about, about that type of, of team building. I, and I totally agree with that experience. I think it takes um, an awful lot of misplaced hubris to look at a team, like from a management perspective and say, oh, I can reposition these people and get the same output. Yeah. Like, I think it takes a lot more restraint to look at them and be like, this team is amazing. I'm going to do nothing but get out of their way. Like that's mm -hmm. really what you need to do. And, uh, and I, I think I would, I would say, you know, like my time at tribe was great until it wasn't. And when it wasn't, it was because the team dynamics started changing, and, mm -hmm. you know, that maybe it was nature of the business. I don't know. It doesn't matter, but it went from being like, you know, we were a powerhouse to like, eh, okay. And the, the other the the other narrative uh, in in the this last season of Ted Lasso that I think is worth uh, commenting on is um, Rebecca's motivation and motivations as an as a club owner um, because when this when the series starts she gets ownership of the team um, as part of the divorce with with her husband who formerly owned the team and she basically gets it out of spite. Like she doesn't care about the team. She only is doing it because he, he, it. Cause he loved the team. That was his, and he loved it as a kid and it was everything. And she just wanted to, to take it and then drive it into the ground, which is why she, she hires this podunk, this guy from some podunk college football coach as, as the head coach. Cause she thinks it's going to ruin the team and, and send them into the dirt. Uh, and then, and, and she wants to, and her, her goal for most of the series is to destroy her ex. Uh, and then in the final season, she, there's like, there's this 
moment of like self-realization where she realizes that's no longer the thing that she wants anymore. And the transition and, and, and while that's happening again, spoilers uh, while it's happening, he actually is actively being destroyed by like her team himself. doing doing bell doing well and get by himself and by like him being a shitbag and like yeah. all these things and he's sort of self-destructing and it has and she didn't have to take part in any of that really other than to actually just be honest and be a club owner and like not just drive it into the ground but like actually care a little bit and she does care and i think that that's like the 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 process of like you know the the arc of like self realization uh from from like i'm just doing this out of spite to like you know actually i actually do give a shit and i'm going to give a shit and going to continue to give a shit uh is um i don't know i, I i'm afraid of that getting squelched by the the ted stuff because it's sort of a lesser arc you know, but it's a really important and dynamic uh, plot arc for a very well written, strong female lead. You know, mm -hmm. hmm. the um, the wonderful dynamic too is that you had. Um, Apparently, Ted this is Rebecca. the Ted Lasso episode. I guess so. <laughs> Which need to decompress after 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 the, well, the final. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I I was gonna say that 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 Ted and Rebecca, um, their their relationship like is pretty stable the entire series, which is cool. Yeah, it doesn't fall into tropes in any way. Right. Yeah. They just. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. She's annoyed. I mean, everybody's annoyed with Ted at the very beginning. Uh, her possibly more than other people because of proximity. Um, yeah. 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 Um, I uh, we we started another show, um, that's a little weird, uh, called Sweet Tooth on Netflix. Have either of you seen this one? Mm -mm. It's um, it's very um on the nose uh but it's uh takes place during uh, i think it was released in 2021 maybe um but there's this uh virus that takes over the world imagine this if you will and oh uh, robin was telling me about this and these hybrid children are born and people hate the hybrid and it's like it's pretty good it's it's uh it's like one of those where you're like, oh yeah, this could never happen on like network television. This is like a streaming only show because <clears throat> it's just like, you know, you don't have to catch a huge audience with it and you wouldn't unlike network television episode two, they would have canceled it, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but it's good. It's enjoyable. It's worth checking out. It's, How many uh, episodes? I, I think there's three seasons or something. Oh, wow. Like it's not, okay. yeah, so like it somehow keeps going. Um, We're in like, we're into the second season. Uh, So we, we actually didn't just start watching it. We've, it's sort of been like a, you're now entrenched yeah yeah we have to finish it we have mm -hmm. to finish it um and it's a little it's formulaic and predictable like you sort of know like oh they're gonna get out of this mess and that's fine it's sometimes you need tv like that but um gary since you have apple tv have you been watching schmigadoon i loved schmigadoon yes both seasons we when the second season came out i was like we were just we're just working we're just working through the second season now oh it's um it's so great like it's i why did why is apple knocking these out like this the the such because they have tv because they have budget is that is that all it is they're just throwing I'm, I'm a lot assuming, of money at it i'm i'm assuming the throw i mean i know that they're throwing a lot of money at it and i know that but, the the production values of of the shows that they're doing is a lot higher than what you would see on regular tv yes. at least for sure yes that's absolutely true the production value is insane um it's so good so over the top um but if it's just a money thing like it can't keep up this way right like at some point they need to make it a profit yeah, center but they, can, they, they can they can it, it doesn't have to like apple tv does not need to be a does not need to make money because apple can make money apple tv hardware. apple yeah. tv can be a loss leader 
to pull them into a subscription model where they get you know customers that then that they can then upsell on other things and like with like like partnerships with you know other but like and they and they can maybe maybe even as an upsell to getting people to to purchase app actual apple tv devices to more easily watch apple tv and then subscribe to you know paramount plus and disney plus and all the other bullshit hmm. shrinking was good dickinson was good i mean they they really are knocking it out and and that's the thing i think that's that's interesting about like netflix has some some good series um it, they've also got some some stuff that is obviously very cheap to produce um while still yeah. being relatively watchable like uh aaron and i really like indian matchmaker uh and we just finished Jewish Matchmaker, which has just had its first season. Um, really different uh, vibes there. If you go from the one thing to the other thing, it's. Um, but uh, but like, I, there's no way that either of those shows cost very much money. It just follows some folks around the camera and then have a studio yeah. to record interviews with with the matchmaker in question, and then you're done. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. And then they have their their higher budget things like Stranger Things and uh, and Wednesday, and those they can splurge on a little bit because they because they know that they can pull subscribers, you know, um, with with those titles because people are gonna like sign up for Netflix just to watch those things. Um, What's the good content on Disney then? I mean, I guess like Andor Disney? and like, but I mean they're not making anything. I know like, they're not making. Yeah, no, it's. Honestly, like I haven't, I haven't opened up the Disney Plus app in a really long time. I mean, I catch um, up on whatever the current Muppet content. Yeah, they've got Muppets, yeah. but, but they don't have like, any really new know, Muppet content. But... Like all their stuff I... is like it, it's it's more about having the library, really. I saw there's a new Electric Mayhem show about the Muppets. No, oh. <laughs> and I always thought I always thought that they were cast aside. So I was like, <laughs> oh, that's like. Content well, I saw I that they were doing some sort of new Muppet show updated for the modern era, and I was like, oh, God, this is going to be bad. <laughs> um, I don't know about that. Yeah. We, we, I, I, I watched, into... we watched the first couple episodes of Willow on, on Disney+, Plus, and that was okay. It, exactly. it wasn't, it wasn't like the thing. It was Disney Plus everything. Yeah, it wasn't the thing that I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. I wasn't I wasn't super invested in I mean we only watched the first couple episodes of The Mandalorian and I know that everybody said it's amazing and I probably should give it a second chance but like honestly like I don't give a shit. I I ended up what like we started watching it around just like I'm just not into this. So I I kind of caught it here and there on my own to finish it but only because I'm like well I have to consume the Star Wars content because I know I don't, it's it's like I feel I, I, I feel compelled. I feel compelled to like watch all the Star Wars shit but like Yeah. In my old, like my kid, my, like my son is the most excited about Star Wars besides me and the family, and that's not very much. Like it's he's just not. It's not that much of a thing, and it's like it's missed its cultural moment, I guess. And it's trying to like regurgitate the feeling of, you know, a new hope, and there's just there's no way. Like it's just not possible. Is it? Do you feel like you are obligated to watch it because, like, a younger version of yourself would have killed for more Star Wars content yes. at a certain point? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that part of me died with the Phantom Menace. That part of me. Was, I mean, let me show when you. When the Phantom something. Menace came out, I was like, "Oh, is this what you're giving me? Fuck that!" <laughs> oh, <Get it. laughs> there's a Severance. There's another great one. I'm wearing the uh, the Lumen shirt. So yeah. Hmm. Um. I mean, let me let me show you how effective this uh, Star Wars uh, uh, relaunch stuff is. When I was a, uh, a younger lad, I played the Star Wars collectible card game, and so oh. I've taken to uh, eBay and I've purchased mm, too many too cards, many. <laughs> too many, <laughs> and and like try to play with the kids, like teach them how to play, and they're like, "It's it's just okay, Dad. It's just okay." <laughs> well, and and like oh. I, one of my favorite one of my favorite computer games of all time was uh star wars rebellion um which is it's a two two player or like you against the ai uh game where you control either the galactic empire or the rebel alliance and it's you control the entire fleet 
Um, it's so like Command can, and Conquer, but Star Wars and planets. Is that the yes? One? Yeah, yeah. And that was can, so good. You can, you can that move, was so good. <laughs> you can move your generals to whatever whatever ships, and there's like, and you can actually like do. It was one of the first games that had 3D interactive like battles. It was turn based, I think, but like mm-hmm. you could actually go into the battle and direct ships to go in different directions and different formations and stuff. It was amazing, um, and yeah, I mean that's that's. It, there was a time where Star Wars put out a lot of really good content and games, and now I just can't be. They just put out now. They just put out a lot of content. Yeah. So well, and, and even even cute. even when it was obviously like Star Wars releasing a title that is just a clone of this other game that already exists, like um, mm-hmm. Dark Forces was the first person shooter. Uh, Star Wars game that came out when like first person shooters first came out. So like there was Doom, there was Quake, and then oh, Dark Lucas Arts releases Dark Forces, and it's the same thing as those other games except with a lightsaber, uh, and force powers, and like, but it was really good. <laughs> Here's a cute thing that's happened in my house. Um, we have an Xbox. Ty plays it a fair bit. Katie plays it a little bit. Charlotte doesn't play it, um, but she wants to. We have this old Lego game, Lego City Underground, which is yep. the Lego series of games are great for young kids because it's like it's set up where it's challenging, but you don't just like fail and like, you know, it it it's it's it encourages it, it it's an encouraging thing and it's funny as heck. Like so much like smart aleck humor in there that some of it because of like timing is like is lost on kids, but for adults it's like it's just over the top hysterical. Um uh, so Charlotte has wanted to play Xbox with me. A couple mornings so we sat down with the controllers and she's like you know figuring out how to move the character and stuff and i mean that's a it's a big ask for the controller that's bigger than her hand and all that you mm-hmm. know and uh but it's just it's been adorable i think we've like made it through two levels and at this point and there's i don't know how many there are it feels like hundreds because i used to play with ty so speaking speaking of of xbox and ted lasso um i a few months ago, I started. Uh, I started playing FIFA again. I my last copy of FIFA is twenty twenty, I think. So, uh, it's a little bit outdated. But um, when we started watching Ted Lasso, and in particular this season, I was like, I just want to play AFC Richmond. And there's no way of doing that in the game. And I really want there to be a game where I can play AFC Richmond. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, barring that. Uh, I just recently started a new uh, manager career where the manager is named Ted Lasso, and I tried to make him look like Ted Lasso. <laughs> <laughs> I love career mode in older games like that because everyone's it's like, I'm going to start a new career. It's fun. I started a career in um, NASCAR Heat 5. I don't even know what year that came out. 2019, I think. We have this game. I never play it, but it's fun to race every once in a while. Mm-hmm. So after going to the races this past weekend, I'm like, yeah. So my name for my driver is Ernie Speedometer. I see. I always play as myself. I always put a, inject a character that is Chris Reynolds, mm-hmm. and I was um, uh, as a player. You can choose their age. So obviously, I choose the youngest age, so they have the longest career tra- trajectory, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I think that the youngest you can be is is like fifteen or sixteen or something. So there's a sixteen year old Chris Reynolds, and so my mm-hmm. number as a player is seventy eight because that's like the actual year that I was born. Um, and but then I, I do it as a manager too. Um, and, uh, so this was like the first time in the first time I can remember, uh, that I started a career mode, uh, in like a game or in FIFA where I'm not playing as, as a, as a, you know, super imposition of like avatar of myself, like Mm -hmm. where I'm playing as Ted and actually like, because one of the, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this was because, um, uh, FIFA like has post-game interviews and pre-game interviews. Um, and I wanted the opportunity to, to, tr- to go into those interviews as, as Ted would and like, like mm. respond to the questions as Ted would. And it's not that hard because you get three options for each question. And it's like, okay, which of these three things would Ted say? Um, it's always the kindest. Yes. It's always the nice one. It's always like, well, we did our best. And <laughs> like, like, I really believe in our team and, and you know, like, we'll do better next time or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that was, do you spend time on the avatar making it look like you? I tried. Yeah. Oh man. I, I always tried. like the random one. So if it's like bug eyes and like 
you know, pink mohawk. I'm like, yep, that's me. Like it doesn't, uh, it's, you know, I mean, that's who I, I am now. <laughs> yeah. I, I try, I, there's, there's only so many options and I don't go so super deep into it. Um, so it doesn't quite look the same, but I usually at least try to do the facial hair and sometimes I'll do the hair hair, but with my player, most recently I gave myself a pink mohawk because that's probably out of the mohawk colors. It would, that it were available that was the one that was probably the one i would most do and i would definitely if i was a player and had hair mm. would definitely have a mohawk that's um, a great like a mingling question if you had a mohawk if you're talking to someone without a mohawk if you had a mohawk <laughs> what color would it be yeah no, if you're talking to someone with a mohawk you just sound dumb if you oh, had yes. regular hair what would it be like <laughs> <laughs> have you ever considered going side to side um yeah I, i'll keep that one in my pocket when i have to mingle next time but with uh with Ted with Ted I I, I made sure that his default clothing was uh, like a blue uh, jumpsuit like a sport mm. track suit uh, and a baseball cap uh, and he has a mustache and there's only like five faces to choose from so it's the one that was most looked like him and then I gave him a mustache and there's only one mustache to choose from so it couldn't be the big bushy one but it was a mustache that is a good mustache that he has yeah I can't grow a stash like that I, I my. I yeah I mean I haven't shaved in like four days and this is what it is so I guess my mustache thing. is kind of my mustache when I shave off everything else and just have a mustache it looked like my dad and it freaks me out so then I shave it immediately hmm. um, a couple years back well four years maybe when I was still in Jacksonville there was a, a point where the Jags had a quarterback with a mustache so on Sundays I would shave and leave that but it really <laughs> just looked like I mean a half attempt. Attempt. <laughs> attempt. Yeah. And I'm really trying here. Like, <laughs> come on, what, guys. What, what, what muscles do I flex to make it grow? I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, I should tell you that I went to the race on Sunday, the NASCAR race. Mm -hmm. Not Sunday. Well, I went on Sunday, but it was raining, so they postponed it till Monday. Um, it's a safety thing. They don't want to run in the rain and, you know, kill someone. So, I appreciate that. So we went on Monday and there was a race on Saturday also canceled. So that was rescheduled for Monday. They, they said, if you have a ticket to either one, just come for both races. Um, and if you have like a seating conflict, just see an usher. They'll sort it out. So no seating conflicts. Everyone was pleasant. Um, oh, right. Because it was a long weekend. Yeah. So when Monday, yeah, Monday, we, Ty and I got to the track at like 10 a.m. and did not leave until 1130 p.m. that night. Wow. It was a lot. That's a uh, solid day. <laughs> this is like the it's the it's the only six hundred mile race of the year, so it's like the it's a uh, what do they call it a crown jewel race. Yeah, so uh, and then she bring in food. So I had like you know my trail mix. I had you know seltzer and I had some cheese and like you know. <laughs> it was just like, it was now you're just so listing funny. random foods. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bizarre. It was it was great. It's like a. They know they know how to treat like, the patrons there, you know, and, um. Oh, I know. I was gonna say there was this group in front of us. Like, there there are some really like stereotypical people that show up to this. Like, you imagine like the mullet and no shirt. Like, yes, that gentleman was there, twenty <laughs> six hundred times. Um, the row in front of us though, the first race, these guys come in and there's there's three guys and they come in and one's carrying like a case of Coors Light, the other one's carrying a case of Miller Light, and they are just like. I mean, these like it's just these cans, and your seats have tables in front of them. Like, there's one long table. It's like a great place to spread out, spread out. So they're just like emptying these cans. Emptying. The first yellow flag comes out, and the guy that didn't bring beer pulls out a jug of uh, Fireball, and they all take a drink of Fireball and pass oh it. I'm like, oh wow, I need to keep an eye on these guys. Like, they're gonna get, they're gonna be trouble in a little while, right? They're gonna, I mean, they're, and then <laughs> it starts raining. Ten minutes or less, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, I'm like, I don't know that I would be, even be conscious at this point, you know. Uh, and they just keep drinking their beer and whatnot. And then the um, uh, they red flagged the race because it was still raining. It started raining again on Monday. So like, well, we'll finish it later, which is why we had to stay so late because that first race stopped. They had a 600-mile race in the middle and then finished the 300-mile race. Oh, my God. But so they stopped that race and those guys were like, all right, that was fun. We got to go. And just like left. So they were done for the day. Like they couldn't stay for the later one because they had to work or something. I don't know. And they just like took their beer and liquor and left and – all and right. went to work and hopefully I get, found I their designated went. driver I mean, yeah. maybe that was a family gathering i don't know yeah oh no i don't know how the how the 
state troopers are not just like popping like every third car leaving the parking mm-hmm. lot like i mean Sir, i saw you stagger to your car you can't drive like it's yeah. like th- that part's a little sketchy to me like walking to the parking lot i'm like ty stay close to me like you yeah, know just no one's being stupid but they're about to get on the road and no that's longer pretty able to stupid. drive yeah. four miles an hour because yeah. there's no traffic in front yeah yeah i would guess most of the car accidents happen once you get about two miles from the track when the traffic eases up and then people start wrecking then people think that they're in the nascar races and start it is awful hard to not put the pedal to the floor when you leave that if i'm being honest <laughs> about things i mean of course for sure i would like expect took, nothing we, less we took a few corners and i'm like, like leaning in the seat like ah! <laughs> uh, i was sober though <laughs> there was that the record <laughs> So I was only ris- irresponsible in one way while driving around the corner <laughs> recklessly. <laughs> I feel like this is the point of the, the episode where Chris goes, do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? We don't. I was actually, I, I actually well, realized that it's been forever since I've looked at the yeah. feedback uh, form stuff. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that had come in. Uh, so I was looking through that stuff and it was all spam. So, <laughs> so mm. we don't. <laughs> so, we, so we don't. Unless, unless there are questions uh, from amongst uh, ourselves. Well, let me think. I'm sure that I have some. I'm sure. Let me you look do. at my notes. Yeah. I've started using the Apple Notes um, application because it's on all my devices. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, is it on my watch? Can Probably. I read notes on my watch? Maybe. I don't know. How cool would that be? You can do a lot of cool stuff with notes. They've really kind of upped the upped the game. I know. It's so good. It's so logical too. It's nice because we sh- like, I don't know, you can share them with different people. So it's just like, like we have recipes and grocery lists and random stuff like that on there. And Yeah, I usually use Google Keep for that for no particular reason other than I use Google things for most things. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, I don't have, like, I haven't invested the time to use Apple Notes particularly. And I think part of that, too, is because I was really put off by the Notepad-like GUI that, like, the desktop app used to have where it, like, actually had the lines. Like, the like it bo- Yeah, stuff. it bothered me so much that I was like, nope, this isn't for me. <laughs> yeah, that's gone for what it's worth. Are you all iPad users? Do you have an iPad you use? Uh, we have a collective iPad, a single iPad. Yeah. Okay. I use it mostly for Procreate and like drawing and stuff. Erin Aaron uses the iPad mostly. Um, and mostly that is when she just doesn't want to open up her laptop. I love mine for reading because I will turn it sideways and have the Kindle app or whatever app on one side and then the notes on the other side. Oh. So I can take notes as I'm doing, as I'm reading. And that has been uh, pretty great. Smart. Although you can take notes in the Kindle app, but it's just not. I would not do There's that. I would not about... use the Kindle app for anything other than reading things because anytime you try to do anything else, it like there's like a two second lag before it lets you do anything other than just turn a page. Mm. I don't know that I've noticed that, but maybe it's just because I only turn pages. I, I have I have a, a paper white, and I think it probably has a smaller processor or whatever. I and I still have an old Kindle, like I don't know, it's like this big. It's a tiny little thing oh, okay. I, that you can't tell. By that's useless. Why did I do that? Nobody could tell. Like it's it's oh, yay big. Yeah, like that. There's no perspective there. What was I thinking was going to happen? What was I thinking? What, what, was, what, what was I? I was thinking. Yeah, um, you know what I was trying to say. I think, um, but it's a great app for that. And then for music, like I, I when I go to nursing homes, like mm. boom. I have a pedal, like a Bluetooth pedal, so I can turn pages with that. Nice. I just have like a little stand, snap the iPad in, and then it's like, yeah, we can sing old Elvis songs or Beatles songs or whatever. It's awesome. Works out okay. Um, I mean, still means I have to like know the song, and it oh. doesn't seem to do that yeah. part. For there me. is, there <laughs> is some. <laughs> but it's a low bar. Aren't we thrilling? Yeah, yeah. And so, Gary, do you have any questions? Is it where we came from? You're looking at your notes. 
I was, and I don't have any questions shotted down that would be appropriate for this group. No, oh, that's too bad. Um, well, no, I'll, well, okay, I'll hit you with one. Um, I'm at a point where I'm like thinking through um, what I'm doing. What should I be doing? Like with your life, with, with yeah. things in general? I love yeah. that you're dropping this like two minutes before the end. We could have yeah, talked about this. It's the perfect time to drop this question. Journey. Yeah, it's the perfect time to drop this question. Um, like, are you, do you, I mean, like, that's kind of a larger thing. Like, do you mean like mm -hmm. what your drive is, what the, what your supposed finish line is? Why do you need a finish line? Like, I think those are all fair, uh, questions. Um, I think some of this stems from, I, when I was in college, I had this, like, I want to work on NASA's website and I'm closing <laughs> in and, like launching. I know, I know it's like, I know I, and I, I, I'm very fortunate to be at a spot where for the last whatever months I've just been like, holy shit, I get to do this like pretty much every day. And that's, uh, it's amazing. There's a point that's going to end. I don't know what that point is. Like it may be years from now, but at some point that's going to end and I'm going to have to do something else. And I'm scared about how I follow up from this mm. and still find something that I wake up and go, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You know, I, I that's, uh, that's the fear. That's where the question comes from. Is what you should be, be doing. Related. Yeah, what you should be doing is yeah, is preparing for retirement. I hope it takes me there, but I don't think it's going to. Kids are. Expensive. I mean, not necessarily like preparing for retirement, like as in you're going to retire from this job, but just the, in the sense of like, like how you're going to financially survive when LinkedIn you're learning. not when you're not making income. Yeah, uh, there's a yeah. lot of assumptions that that I have about things that will happen before. I am at a retirement age that depend on Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.